Okay, so let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Annie and this Amara gave me a perfect segue into today's talk on building an effective front-end portfolio. So for those who don't know me, my name is Annie. I'm just going to go through an intro very quickly and talk about what we're going to cover. So my name is Annie. I'm often known as Annie Bombani Online. I wasn't always a developer actually. I actually have a Bachelor of Arts in Multimedia Design and I worked as a designer in Australia and England for several years before I decided to become a poor English teacher. Now, so that wasn't paying the bills, so I made a transition into engineering. And as Jen said, I graduated in summer of 2019. I'm currently in my second role at a startup as the front end engineering lead in Toronto. So why am I here today and what am I speaking to you about this? So I've been building portfolios for a little while. My first portfolios were physical art portfolios. I used to carry my artwork in presentation photos like this one, and I'd bring them to my art and design interviews. Um, these are some of the examples of tradi traditional medium work I did around that time, which would have been similar to the things that would have gone into those. When I decided to get into design, not art, because no money in art, my portfolio became digital, but CD-ROM digital. So here's a screen from my very first, from my interactive CD-ROM graduation portfolio. And here's a selection of digital interactive experiences and experimented experiments I created around this time. Um, the bottom one I'm particularly proud of, it's a rotoscope animation. So that was really fun to work on. And anyway, from these early portfolios, my the work finally moved online and to the various iterations of the websites that we see today. So I built this very first one in Notepad and it was just HTML and CSS. When I moved to Canada from Japan, my second portfolio was a WordPress site and because I thought I needed a CMS. It's based on a paid theme called Uncode, and I heavily, heavily customized it with my very, very poor CSS skills at the time. And the latest version of my portfolio, which is my current one, is one that I completed like three years ago now, like time flies, and this was my final bootcamp project. I designed and coded it in a week from scratch, and again, this is mostly just HTML and CSS, but it does have a little JavaScript this time and I've built it in VS Code with version control. So I'm sharing all these with you to give you a brief background of my experience building portfolios um, over the years. And this talk will cover some of the takeaways that I've learned during these different iterations. <clears throat> so after this session, my aim for you is that you know exactly what a portfolio is and the benefits of having one we're gonna talk about how to get started and what to include. I'm gonna give you some practical tips. I'm gonna share lots and lots of examples and hopefully you walk away with some solid actionable steps. But most of all, I just really hope that you be inspired and have a lot of fun. So let's get started and let me open this section up with a question. How do we convey what we're about, our worth, and our value to complete strangers on the internet. So what is a portfolio and do we actually need one? We're not talking about stock or real estate portfolios here. A work portfolio is a compilation of the materials that exemplifies things like your personality, your skills, your interests, qualifications, and even education. And it provides insight into who you are your work ethic and demonstrates the scope and quality of your experiences and abilities. So for writers, a portfolio may be a collection of articles and stories. For photographers, a gallery of photographs. For designers, it'll be the branding, the logo, the designs. And for today's workshop, we're specifically talking about developer portfolios. Now, Let's talk about the two big reasons that people have portfolios. First one, surprise, to get a job. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You want to put your work out there, people see your work, and they want to hire you based on the work that they see. The second one is that portfolios are really good for personal branding and to improve your online presence 
it's very very important in today's world everyone's you know you google everybody else so it's a really good way to make sure you're creating curating the narrative that you want out there and i'm going to be cheeky and a third one another reason to have a portfolio is that it's pretty fun to have one well you know you're flexing your creative muscles you're building things from zeros and ones and you're trying new things and at the very very end of it you're creating a very valuable digital asset for yourself so maybe you're not convinced i like to argue that if you are a web developer and you're building things on the internet then yes you should definitely have a portfolio to showcase your web development work it's more than just a collection of your work your portfolio is your work but maybe you're thinking, okay, I have a GitHub account. I'm hired for the non-visual code that I write. I don't need a portfolio. I mean, you're not wrong. You don't need a portfolio. But remember, a portfolio doesn't just showcase your work. It shows people who you are and what you're about. So if you have a website, you're gonna that's going to level up your credibility a notch. And you're going to stand out big time against the developer who doesn't have one. So I hope you're convinced and let's talk in, about what goes into building an online portfolio. The first question we want to ask ourselves is, who are we building for? We might be tempted to think that we're building for other developers, but if you're looking for work, you're actually building for non-technical people who will be looking at your portfolio first, such as recruiters and hiring managers. And if you think it's okay to just throw something very quickly together, let me tell you, first impressions count. I mean, there's a reason why companies spend millions of dollars on design and UX and marketing. So very, very important things to consider. Um, let's talk about the three core things that's gonna go into a basic portfolio. And this is the stuff that will get you hired. And that's your about section, work and contact. So, I would argue that your about section is one of the most important but underrated sections of your site. It's often one of the first stops that people go to when they land on a website. Now think about how you browse. Do you often click the about link of a company or website? I mean, I know I do. I wanna see who built this site, what is the company about, what did they value? Pretty nosy and curious like that. But, you know, if people are looking to work with you, they want to make sure you're not a serial killer or something. So you'd be doing yourself a disfavor to throw away this chance to tell the world who you are, what matters to you, what you do, and how you do it. Um, I think you should add, I really highly recommend that you add a photo. Um, psychology tells us that we love looking at other people's faces. It helps to build connection and adds personality to your site. It also reminds people that you're a real human, not a, just a faceless robot behind the screen. But if you are you know, a bit shy about adding a photo, add an avatar or something similar. You want to basically put a face to your name. And just a caveat about your about section, just want to share that your about bio isn't, I mean, your about um, paragraphs and write-up isn't quite the same thing as your hero statement or bio. Let me just show you an example of that. So... This is a example from Taylor Ho. He is a designer and this is his hero statement or hero text right here. My name is Taylor Ho and I build things on the internet. Super, super short. Now, this is his um, actual about page where he actually goes into a lot more detail about that. So you can kind of see the differences between that. And let's talk about some tips when you're writing your about um, section. So the first thing you want to do is decide between the first person or the third person. First person is using I, me, we. This tends to carry across a lot more personal. And the third person is any, she, and her. This is more professional. When you're starting out in the industry, I'm going to say, I'm going to recommend using the first person. It's a lot more personal. You're trying to build a personal connection. But as you get on with you into your career, you know, a few years down, you can switch to the third person if you, if you like. But in general, I recommend um, starting off with the first person at least. Then you want to talk about your values, your backgrounds, your expertise and your goals. Like, how did you get here today? What are your credentials? What are your former jobs? And 
I wouldn't recommend trying to hide your former jobs if you're transitioning from another field because it can be very, very important and help you to stand out. If you talk about what excites you about, you know, web development or what do you love doing and what value can you offer the potential reader, which is, I mean, sorry, which who could be your potential employer. And so those are little things that you can add. And the final thing I recommend is to add something personal to make it memorable. So we want to help others relate to you and you want to stand out as being authentically yo, you. You can use phrases like, when I'm not coding, I like to do ABC, or you can find me doing X, Y, Z. So these are some tips that if you're struggling with writing an about page, um, you can have a look into these. So a couple of examples of some about pages. Um, Braden was a musician to, and he turned into a developer instantly. That personal bit of information helps us to be like, oh, okay, this is something that's unique about Braden. The one thing that I would change about this particular about section is that I would probably split the text, the large body of text into three, two or three paragraphs, and this will help improve readability. So I'm just not looking at a big war of text. text. Here's another example by Jenny. She essentially split her about into a couple of sections. And when you group things into a bit of a list, it's very quick and easy to scan. So you notice that Brayden, both Brayden and Jenny have chosen to, to include their photos um, as well. And I'm sure most of you, if not all, would have been drawn to their faces right away to help build that connection. Now let's talk about number two, which is work. And this is of course super, super important. The first tip that I can give you is to be selective. Quality over quantity. Your worst work will bring down the overall quality of your portfolio. So remember that. And how do you find what work to put in your portfolio? Well, you can revisit and clean up your old projects. You want to demonstrate a range of skills and technology and project variety to show your versatility, especially when you're early on in your career and you're not sure what kind of environment you, you want to go into. It might be an agency, a product, big tech, a startup. So there's a few um, of those that you want to consider. Examples of, um, of projects you can put in could be a Photoshop conversion or website client, a JavaScript game. You could do a CRUD app, which stands for create, uh, read, update, and destroy, or something that uses an API. These are all great skills to have as a front-end developer. You want to make sure that you link to your live projects and your code. So those who don't um, no cut recode will look at your live ones and those who are interested in the quality of your code and how it's written will have a look at your code like your GitHub account. In general, I do recommend a minimum of three projects that you're proud of, but if you just have one and you really want to get started and build that portfolio, drop it in there. I think it's a lot more important that you get something out there. And honestly, I've heard of folks getting jobs with just one project before they've even completed their portfolios. It's rare, but it does happen. So let's just get started. The next, here's examples of some um, portfolios that um, where people have added their work. Sharon has actually added four different projects in hers. And when you click on them, it shows a little mini description. It shows the technologies that she's used. And you can see that it's linked to her live and her GitHub account. On the other hand, Raul, who is a bit more experienced, um, has put just three projects, his recent projects, on his front landing page. And once you click into view all projects, that opens up a page with a lot more of his other projects, which I'm sure that he's selected the best ones as well. So finally, the third one is your contact. Make it easy for people to contact you, especially when you're starting out or if you want other opportunities once you once you go down further into your career. And if you're on social media, drop your links for increased social proof that you're actually a real person. Some, a question that I get asked is, should you include your resume? I don't have a strong opinion on this one, so I'm gonna leave it up to you. There's pros and cons to both, and I think both arguments are perfectly balanced and valid. Some people like to link theirs for recruiters to easily download. I chose not to personally because I wanted my work to speak for itself first. And then if somebody is interested, then I'd like them to directly contact me for my resume. 
But in this case, I feel like I have a strong enough portfolio of work that I don't need to have my pop my resume up there right away. Now, if you're using a form, I would recommend using an API to manage it. it just makes it really, really quick. These are a few um, APIs that you can use. For me personally, on my website, I use Formspree. Super, super easy to use. So that's the one that I'm just going to recommend off the bat. I'm familiar with it. It's just like plug it in and go. Some examples of um, the contact page. So here's Brittany. She has just a really short write-up. She's actually introduced, in, um, included her, her email right here. And you can see her social links there and a nice little form there. On the other hand, Pavo has also in, 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 included his social links, but he has a button that actually opens up into a um, email app. So two slightly different approaches to the contact page. Now, if you're thinking, okay, there's, you know, about work, contact, these three things, they're pretty simple. And you're thinking maybe it's way too simple, but let me show you a very effective example of a portfolio that only uses these three things. So um, Dijon is a designer with over 10 years of experience. It's literally just about work and contact. So um, let me just switch over here to the real site over here. So he's about. This is his hero statement over here. I design and build digital products. And as we scroll down, nice photo of him. And then we get more into the details of who he is. Um, when we look at his work over here, this captures all his, the works that he's done, a selection of them. And once you click in, you see as well, it will have a lot more of a description. And finally, the contact. So he's not even got a simple form here. He's got his email address, and then his social links over there. So that's an example of using just the three, three core things. So I hope that helps to convince you. But here are some other things, like bonus things that you can add to your portfolio if you like. The first one, very, very easy, is the skills, your skills, the tools and the technology that you can use. You can simply add icons or you can create a completely new section for it and, and write some more stuff if you want. The next one if, is your blog and technical writing. You can easily add a link to your navigation menu, and this helps people to know about the things that you like writing about and have some expertise in. If later down your career, or maybe even earlier, you can throw things like your media appearances, appearances, your talks, and your awards. And the final thing is testimonials. If you've done any kind of work for people, ask them to write something nice for you. Social proof is one of the most powerful tools at your disposal that you can use. And that's why reviews are such a big thing for people. We tend to place some importance in what other people say. So let's look have, let's look, quickly look at some quick examples. Um, so Becky, for her skills, have, has just added a bunch of the logos of um, the technology that she uses. Whereas Jack, on the other hand, has created um, a, has written a full you know, write up about the stuff that he's actually used. I probably wouldn't quite recommend um, putting a bar for your progress of your skills, like like he did over here, the front end, back end, React, because you know it's hard to say like what is a hundred percent. Like when you get to that hundred percent, like are you just the god of you know front end or React or something? So I'll probably stay away a little bit about from that, but that's kind of just um my feeling about that. Um, here's an example of a blog by Sarah Dresner. She's been around for a while, amazing, amazing developer. So she's got a lot of, uh, you know, posts on her personal blog. When we're looking into media, Hannah's done something really interesting about what, about how she's with her website, with the really old Windows, you know, operating system. And she's chosen to add her awards and her talks and everything this way. On the other hand, Taylor has listed her interviews in a more of a blog-like um, a, a blog -like way on her website. So testimonials and clients, Dan's found a bunch of nice people to write nice, you know, nice stuff for him over here. And then Matt Farley, on the other hand, has chosen to use just logos. So you can see there's a lot of different ways that you can add or you know, extras to your portfolio, and it doesn't necessarily need to be one way. Just make it what works for you. 
Okay, so how do we get started now that you know what content to include, which are three main ones are about work and content, you can start thinking about building your website. <clears throat> and the first thing I want to say to you is use whatever you're comfortable with. If you want to use WordPress, go for it. HTML and CSS, you know, do it. Whatever is easiest for you to get started. Here's a great tweet from Danny Thompson that I really love. Like I mentioned, my current dev portfolio is largely just HTML and CSS. And guess what? That portfolio got me hired. It doesn't need to be complicated. The second thing I want to talk about is if you're, if you're not a designer, don't be afraid to use templates and customize them to make it your own. You literally save yourself hours of anguish over fonts and colors and all those small details that you have to consider if you design your portfolio from scratch. A lot of great sites use templates and you shouldn't feel ashamed of using so. So here are three places that you can look for templates and you know choose a free one, choose a paid one. I've done both, it's all good. And if you like to manipulate images, here are three free uh, programs that you can use, Photoshop, Canva, and Figma, if you don't have Photoshop or one of those other paid ones. Here's a very quick step-by-step -step to do. The first thing you want to do is register a domain name. Now, you don't necessarily need a custom domain name, but they cost about you know two lattes a year, and they really make a big difference to your credibility. The next thing to do after that is get hosting, like Netlify, Heroku. I think Heroku is paid now. And GitHub pages, still free for sale. And then there's traditional hosting, like Bluehost, HostGator. So get some hosting over there. The third thing after that, once you've built your portfolio, you've registered domain name, you've got hosting, you've built your portfolio, is to deploy your portfolio and share it with the world. Now, this is pretty important. Like, tell your friends and family and share it with your social networks. Admittedly, I didn't share mine until like later, but it's a really good way to celebrate, you know, this win that you have. And then continue to iterate. The first iteration of your portfolio out there isn't your final one. So this is um, one of the examples for me, one of the very first times in 2020 that I actually shared my portfolio on a tweet. It's actually quite difficult for me to put myself out there and promote myself. You need to be that salesperson, but you got to do it. And gradually over time, you become a lot more comfortable doing it. And so we're going to get to the, um, the part three, which is some bonus tips for you. So a few things that I've talked about. The first one is you want to remember that done is better than perfect. Admittedly, I do struggle with this one. Um, my portfolios take a long time to design and code. So I'm really lucky that my latest one was a bootcamp project. So I had only a week to do it. Um, there's a lot of things I still want to do with it, but it got me my first job in tech and done is better than perfect. You can iterate on it and make it better down the track. Now, something to consider is to think about user experience. People will leave bad websites that are difficult so maybe you've had the experience, you know, often it's banking websites and unfortunately kind of just have to tough those ones out. But when you visit a website that's easy to use, it's such a delight. And potential employers, when they visit your site, they're going to notice that you, you actually care about their experience. So, you know, make it easy for people to read and navigate and find your information and work. Um, think about responsive design, accessibility and performance. A lot of people access websites on their phones. And so think about those touch points and do not force them to download a 20 megabyte, you know, image, please. Like you'd be surprised how often that happens. And then just keep it simple. If all else fails, keep it simple. Don't be afraid to show your personality. Remember at the end of the day, people hire people they want to work with. You're not a machine and don't be a, afraid to experiment with your portfolio a little bit. If you're doing it yourself, you can check out a bunch of other portfolios and you start to recognize patterns you like and you can take those into your portfolio. And ask for feedback. This is a big one. The more feedback you ask for, the faster you level up. So I want you to think of your portfolio as this amazing work in progress. It's a living, breathing document that's ever evolving and growing alongside with you in your career. 
Lynn Fisher is a designer and a developer. She's a great, great, great example of this mentality. So every year since 2007, she's, she creates a new portfolio. You know, she's learned more during the time technology changes and she's constantly updating her website. Now, beyond just the website, here are four other ways that you can showcase yourself. They don't, um, the ways of you can, that you can supplement your portfolio. The first one is using a blogging platform. If you don't want to host your blog on your web, in your own website, you can have a really, you know, cool GitHub profile. If you do a lot of like, you know, illustrative or visual stuff, CodePen or something similar is a really great place to have it. And then there's also Polywork as well. So, but just remember they're not replacements for full portfolios. So I'm just going to very quickly run through. Um, so for the blog, we have um, Hashnode over here with Sky, Sky and then with IU, she's on dev.2.0. Um, Kirk over here has a really nice GitHub profile. He's like written a few things about himself to personalize, personalize it. He's added his latest blog post. And just on the topic of iteration, so this is what he said to me. Mine took a lot of iterations, but slowly but surely it's coming together to something I like. Definitely wasn't you know, this six months ago. So like get started and you can iterate on them as you go along. In CodePen, we have Sarah and Elizabeth. They both do a lot of visual, like CSS art and animations. So CodePen is a great place for them to host some of their work and be discovered that way. And on Polywork, um, Polywork is really cool because you can list a lot of the things that you do outside of just your job. So here are a few examples um, you can see of some profiles there. So just wrapping up because I'm running out of time and just so if we have time for a quick Q&A. So the first one, why do we have portfolio? We want to show the world who you are, what you're about, and to help stand out against other people. I want you to think of your portfolio as this living, breathing, ever you know, evolving compilation of materials that showcases your personality and your work, something that grows with your career. And why do we have one? It, to get work, to increase your personal branding and online presence. And, you know, you have a bit of fun and frustration learning and creating your own, owning your own digital asset. The three must have for portfolio is about work and contact. Beyond that, other materials that you can add is testimonials or companies you've worked with, skills, the tools, the technology you use, and your blog or technical writing, as well as any talks, media appearances, or awards that you've gotten. Thirdly, build with whatever tech you're comfortable in. And don't be afraid to use templates. Do not be afraid, but just customize them to make it your own. Make sure to think about the user experience and some other pre-existing alternatives for developers include blogging platforms like Hashnode Medium Dev.2.0, um, an awesome kick-ass GitHub profile, CodePen, or similar sites where people can see your code, and Polywork. And that wraps it up. Thank you very much. I can be found at anybombani underscore on Twitter, and that is my website over there. Wow, that was a wonderful presentation and very beautiful. And now I feel like I have to tear my website to shreds again and redo it. Oh, I've been wanting to redo mine for the last three years. It hasn't happened. <laughs> oh, no, I think I think one's going to happen. It will be my, my holiday project. Um, wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. We have a couple questions that came through and we have a little bit of time. Um, question for you about building your portfolio. Is it a good idea? You mentioned using the, the GitHub pages. Um, you know, to enhance your, your professional presence online. But some folks are wondering if you can just use that as a replacement for your portfolio. What's your suggestion on that? So I think um, if you really don't want to have a portfolio, I still think a portfolio is a great way to, like, to have because, like, it makes you help you to stand out against someone who doesn't have it. So technically you can and you should definitely have a GitHub profile and use that. But even if you just have like a free one page, you know, page with a bit of like bio and about and a photo or something, like that is way above someone who doesn't have that. So I would still recommend having one, but if you really, really don't, you know, want one, your GitHub profile, like your very decked out GitHub profile is still a good way to go. 
Yeah. Um, one of our uh, speakers today, Julia Undeutsch, has um, inspired me to, to boost up my, my GitHub presentation. So um, yeah, that's very exciting. Um, and another question was, does it add value to add logos of client projects um, on your landing page or images of projects? What's your mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good one. I think at the end of the day, we're all very visual people, right? And companies spend a lot of money um, on their branding and their logos to make it very instantly recognizable for people. So for me, I would recognize, for example, the McDonald's logo is a good example. I would recognize those golden arches a lot more faster than I could probably read the words McDonald's. So in that respect, if you're thinking about it from psychology and you want people to just like recognize and have that brand recognition that you've worked with these great companies or people, then having the logos, I think definitely add value. And, you know, they say an image speaks a thousand words. So having an image of the work that you've done, as opposed to like a heavy wall of text, like helps to break your content up a little bit for one thing. And it just helps them like to guide your visitor along, um, along the page or your content. Yeah, I think taking those screenshots is important anyway for your yeah. own, for just logging your own progression as a developer um, because the web changes so quickly and things disappear anyway. So just <laughs> grab those screenshots. <laughs> um, lots of folks are asking for your slides. <laughs> I, I don't know what, what you would like to do about that, but lots of interest. So this is Yeah, for sure. Um, this is a talk I've done before. So I did have slides, but I'll create a updated PDF of mine and I'll send you a link when I'm done and you can feel free to share that one and put that under the um the stream afterwards, I guess. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yes, lots of people very excited by these. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Um, so I'm just looking through the chat for any other questions. But um, yeah, I think that we can go ahead and thank you so much for such a wonderful presentation. Um, we're going to take another little short break. And then our next speaker is Ifeo Monwosu, who's going to be talking about, it's funny how our our talks kind of progress because we started with, you know, getting excited about this field and now we have our portfolio and next we're going to be talking about adding a headless CMS to a Next.js site. So we're like leveling up, leveling up, leveling up. So by the end of the day, man, we're going to be, we're going to be solid. So this is great. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Annie. Really appreciate your time and a wonderful talk. Thank you.